if you're just going to use a 3D printer to make little toys, it's probably not a worthwhile investment. However, if you're going to use it to make, let's say, a speaker stand or a water pump impeller because, oops, you accidentally dropped it and you broke that. So if you stick around, I'll show you all the tools that you can use that are totally free. They won't cost you anything. It's the same tools that professionals use. And you can make whatever part that you want, whatever your mind can come up with, you can go ahead and make your own stuff. So what about if you don't want to design all your own stuff and you just quite simply would like to have these files that you can print and have 3D parts of your own? Well, the design community is really, really good. You can get a ton of stuff just by downloading what's called an STL file, importing it into your slicer program. And uh, this is a great example of that. This is a bag clip that I needed for some of the hydroponic stuff that I need to get the uh, moisture out. And I just downloaded this STL. I didn't design this thing and then just print it off. And I've got a working clip. This turbo funnel, by the way, is one of the best funnels I've ever used. I ended up printing it off the 3D printer. I can't take any credit for designing it. I just downloaded the STL for that one as well. All right, are you curious? So those are all the pluses. There is definitely cons to a 3D printer. Uh, cost not being one of them, but anyway, I'll get to those later on. If you want to download an STL, it's really simple. You just go to your browser and you type in whatever you're looking for, followed by STL. And lo and behold, on Thingiverse, here's the exact funnel that I printed off. This thing is totally awesome. All you got to do is download the file, import it into your slicer, save it to a disk, take it to your 3D printer, and let it print it off. Now the original is a little bit too small and I still do use that funnel for other things but uh, I want a really big one for my grow so all I did is just made it 175% of the original size and that's the one that I showed you earlier. So that's probably the easiest way to get started initially with 3D printing. The other method that I talked about is using Autodesk Fusion 3D. The learning curve is super easy on this. It doesn't take you much initially and there's a ton of YouTube videos that will show you exactly what you need to do. But as you can see from the left, there's an absolute ton of different things I've ended up making from vacuum adapters to uh, print holders, uh, just lithium battery box. Man, I've made a ton of stuff. Uh, router base plates, you can see all the stuff that I've uh, designed and built myself. This is not including the STLs that I found online. So I found it really good. If you're just looking at this for, you know, making little trinkets or knickknacks, it's a toy. If you're going to be using it to do stuff like this, I definitely think it's a tool. I think you pay all of 250 bucks for the Ender 3D printer. And that's really all there is as far as cost goes. Okay, but we should get down to the negatives of this as well. So one of the cons of setting up a 3D printer initially is it's going to require you to do some learning to figure out exactly how this thing works. If you want to skip that step, the printer I would buy today is a Prusa printer. Uh, I'll leave a link to that one down below. This that, That's the model that I actually am thinking of upgrading my Creality Ender to. It's just going to be way simpler for me to manage it. Uh, auto bed leveling is a feature that it's got built in among plenty of other things and way better support firmware, yada, yada, yada. I won't talk too much about that. But anyway, that's the printer that I would buy if I bought one today. The link is down below. Uh, the other downside to if you get the cheaper one, you're going to spend time being finicky and fandangling with this and playing with settings and print temperatures and all kinds of things to get it to print really high quality good stuff. That's the other reason I would go with uh, a different model. So if you do want Fusion 360 for free, just go download it right from the Autodesk website. You will have to sign up for a personal license and this is essentially just an agreement that you can't sell any of your designs and it's just for the homeowner or the DIYer or whatever the case is. You can't share this stuff. It's for you only, which is fine by me. 
Chances are some of the oddities that I've made here, nobody else wants anyway. Now, as far as cost-wise goes, once you have this thing set up, they're super cheap to run. The uh, speaker bracket that I showed you here is cost about six, seven bucks, somewhere in, the, in that. And uh, basically the cost is just plastic. The machine runs for pretty cheap electricity-wise. It's not even worth really calculating that. Now, as far as strength and longevity of parts, I've had uh, some of the stuff I printed off when I first got this thing uh, ever. Uh, that's probably three years ago, and they've been outside, like that bird house that I showed you. I've also got a bee box. That's been outside for three years, and it still looks, I mean, other than being a little bit dusty and dirty, it's completely in the same condition it was when I put it out there. The strength of the plastics, that's probably another one. The filament that you're most likely going to be using is PLA or PLA+. Plus. PLA+, plus, uh, is the way to go. I'll leave a link to the filament that I like to use down below. It's cheap on Amazon and I've had great success with it. I also find it flows really well and it does print really well and consistently as well. It did take me a little bit of fandangling in the beginning. I did have to play around with printer settings because it seems like this stuff flows just incredibly easily and smoothly compared to the filament I was using before. So I did have to uh, tweak my settings, but now that that's done, I can just take any file, walk over there and click print and bada bing, bada boom, when it's done, it's done. Uh, one last downside I would uh, like to talk to you about uh, is if it's something that you need right at that moment, like you need this thing right now, like a clip or whatever the case is, 3D printing is not right for you if you can just walk down to the store at the end of the street or you're going to the hardware store anyway to pick stuff up. Some of this stuff takes a while to print. That funnel, that's like a day uh, of printing before that's done. So just to give you an idea, some of the smaller little knickknacks, they'll print off in like 10, 15 minutes. But generally speaking, it's like an hour or two probably is your average for just small parts and pieces. Uh, an impeller like this that has more fine detail and stuff. This took about six hours for me to print this thing off. I know initially when I picked this thing up, I was kind of thinking the same thing. Is this more of a toy or more of a tool? I haven't used it for any toy stuff at all other than the little puppy. That was a test print that I made for the wife. But other than that, everything that I've printed off of here has been parts and stuff that I use. Or it's just, um, I've designed pieces that I haven't been able to find anywhere on the market that I would like for myself. So that's what I think the 3D printer is. That's where it really excels. I'm sure there's a ton of DIYers out there that would absolutely love having one of these things once they knew how to use it. Initially, it's probably going to be a bit of a pain in the butt. Hopefully that helps you if you were thinking about buying a 3D printer. And if you are, hopefully you uh, skip the headache phase of the assembly and tweaking and all the fandangling. Yes, that uh, Creality is probably 250 bucks or whatever. And it's a good printer, but I put quite a bit of mods on there. I probably put about 200 bucks worth of modifications into that printer. I wish I would have just bought the one down below. Oh well, lesson learned for next time. <music>